Salem's Lot tries to resurrect Stephen King's vampire classic, but it doesn't fully escape the pitfalls of condensing a thick novel into a two-hour runtime. Gary Doberman, the writer from It, tries to deliver the classic vampire horror vibe. Think old school fangs, glowing eyes, crosses, holy water, you know, all that good stuff. But the film suffers from tonal inconsistencies and some over-the-top performances that are borderline laughable and characters seem oddly unfazed by the whole vampire takeover. It's like no Nobody told them they're in a freaking Stephen King story. Uh, get with the program. The plot. You have an author returning to his hometown in search of inspiration for his next book. And boom, vampires start taking over the small town. Oh, and he sparks a forced relationship that holds negative weight as a plot device. How about Barlow, the iconic vampire? Well, he looks more like a spirit Halloween costume. Uh, nope. Scratch that, Spirit Halloween actually does it way better. The film feels rushed, with the severely underdeveloped characters magically knowing what's going on at all times. The dialogue comes off as unnatural, cramming complex info into a few lines to keep up with the breakneck pace. And somehow, nobody seems to care when people close to them are unalive, so why should I care? Now, credit where it's due, the production nailed the 70s vibe. The shadows, the color grading, the sound design, the bones crunching and slashing, all that good stuff. It's a okay. Plus, there's a scene at a drive-in theater, and damn, there's something magical about those drive-ins. And there's a fantastic moment of tension when the camera peels through a tiny sliver. Salem's Lot will probably leave fans of the book wishing for more nuance. Basically, it's a subpar watch during the spooky season.